This is Plastic Pills, and welcome to Cooking in Capitalism. This is the end of capitalism right here. Today, we're trying a whole new recipe. It's called Accelerationism, fresh out of the box. Do you feel like politics has failed to be relevant in addressing the crises of our age? Do you think that capitalism will inevitably destroy human life on Earth, but you're not at all that interested in unironically calling people comrade or joining a picket line over the weekend? Then I suggest you try this recipe at home. It's easy because you only have to give your mental assent. You don't have to do anything except talk about it. Today's politics is beset by an inability to generate the new ideas and modes of organization necessary to transform our societies to confront and resolve the coming annihilations. While crisis gathers force and speed, politics withers and retreats. In this paralysis of the political imaginary, the future has been canceled. This idea of a future being canceled is central to acceleration. The recipe for accelerationism is easy. Just take one part cyberpunk fiction, one part manic depressive disorder, one part post-humanism or transhumanism, take your pick, and one part you just don't give a f anymore, but you kind of secretly do. Just throw them in the pot and stir. Right-wing politics is as charming as an eel, an eel with genital warts. And leftist politics is a lot of work. Lots of the time it gets overly self-important. It devolves into canceling people on the internet. Meanwhile, our species is microwaving itself and anyone with the power to do anything is not going to do anything about it because they're in on the take. So yes, I am going to drink out of a plastic straw because all this ends in a cataclysmic wasteland anyway. I'm gonna kill a dolphin and I am going to use this plastic straw even though Starbucks made this cup so I don't need a straw anymore. But guess what, I took one anyway. If you are feeling any of these thoughts, do not panic. You are experiencing symptoms of tensions between neoliberal democracy and late capitalism. It's actually very, very normal. Okay. Although well-meaning people will eagerly tell you that this can all be fixed with a few policy changes and maybe some fresh old faces, we have already spent a long time imagining how this ends. Here's what it looks like lately. This is the world as it exists today. Here's a dried out husk of a planet where our descendants fight for survival against viruses we accidentally unleashed, weapons that got into the wrong hands, but mostly capitalism just ran its natural course. For the most part, we don't believe in Star Trek futures anymore. That's a future of working together where currency is abolished and where we have robot friends. That action injured you and saved me. I will not forget it. You're a wise man, my friend. Not yet, sir, but with your help, I am learning. That future has been canceled. Now we imagine dystopian streets, lands of garbage, lands of monkeys, or landscapes of not much of anything at all. These are all in their own way accelerationist futures. So does it really matter whether you use a plastic straw or not and some dolphin chokes on it? Is it worth it to plant a tree? A million trees. The accelerate in accelerationism is about allowing capitalism to run its course and see what happens after or see what's available to happen after. Accelerationism is closely associated with both posthumanism and transhumanism, the former of which was the topic of a previous video. Transhumanism is this idea that humans can physically augment their bodies, brains, and even genes to become smarter, to live longer, and to have a more enjoyable life. And it's not only augmentation with, you know, prosthetic limbs or laser eyes, but also the modification of our genes using things like CRISPR, for example. 
Transhumanism believes that we can use these artificial technologies to propel humanity as a species into a new stage of evolution. Hopefully we don't get left behind in the process. There are a variety of names associated with accelerationism, including Marx, Nietzsche, Deleuze and Guattari, Paul Virilio, Nick Land, and Mark Fisher. Now a few of these are what we would call precursors, and some are theorists of the post-human, I've mentioned them before, and these are those that fit into accelerationism proper. I won't elaborate on all of these thinkers in detail now, but their names will probably come up. There is no perfect agreement here, but there is a common thread in that modern state-sponsored capitalism is seen as perverse and that contemporary left-wing politics is naive, out of date, and powerless to deal with modern crises. And finally, that new imaginative narratives and conceptual maps need to be drawn. And these are probably more important now than they have ever been. Benjamin Noyes was sort of the first guy to give a definition to accelerationism. And he wrote that accelerationists replied to Marx's contention that the real barrier of capitalist production is capital itself by arguing that we must crash through this barrier by turning capitalism against itself. The accelerate in accelerationism is allowing capitalism to destroy itself. The gist is this, global capitalism is robust and too strong to halt with revolution. So class revolt is, sorry, not gonna happen. Besides, capitalist economies have also developed some useful stuff that we can use most especially in terms of technological developments. We could look at social media as a way to organize, rate, and communicate, or crowdfunding platforms, or blockchain, or modifying our genes. This tech can be useful, and maybe we can put it to an end that would benefit humanity. Pretty much, whatever you believe, there is no stopping the capitalist train. And we can only really make a new world out of what is left. So. What is that world going to look like? Accelerationism is a political philosophy. Sort of. A political anti-philosophy. There are a few variants or flavors, both right-wing and left-wing, but both claim that they are just being realistic about what the world is by every measure, including urbanization, energy use, ocean acidification, global warming, tropical forest loss, every single trend is accelerating. This is even called the Great Acceleration. It figures as the instantiation of the Anthropocene, a new geological epoch. The central question is this, if the biosphere doesn't entirely collapse and we don't all die, could new social and political systems be arranged after capitalism? Maybe new politics will be possible after. Maybe new concepts of the human are possible after. As far as global capitalism is concerned, it's not a great selling point that it's much easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. But the next world is what accelerationists are trying to imagine. We imagine these futures in sci-fi, a thriving pocket of our cultural imaginary. These are basically versions of the future. Here, there's no more money, everyone's more or less taken care of, everyone on Earth starts getting along and realize that we are stronger together. There's this utopian post-scarcity economy and something like a benevolent world government that runs the Earth. This is the end goal of humanism in terms of human progress. Then there is the dark side of sci-fi which is more often what we have these days. We have cataclysms. Robot takeover. Zombie or viral cataclysm. Environmental cataclysm. Corporatist cataclysm. <laughs> and even monkey cataclysm. In each of these cases, humans are reduced to slaves or to their beastly instincts. In any case, the humanist Roddenberry future has been cancelled. Variants of accelerationism often fall into the second post-humanist or transhumanist futures. There will be some crisis from which capitalism cannot recover. Left accelerationism, for example, embraces this collapse with a return to new intentional communities, maybe. 
Think of communes or groups of people that share resources and use something like Bitcoin or blockchain in an enclave outside of a state. Think of a social media site run not by an advertising corporation, but by a community of like mind. You can think of direct democracy, where you can vote with your phone. Most visions of the future for accelerationists sort of look at the tools we have already and how they could be used post-cataclysm. Right accelerationism is more on the side of a neo-feudalism, enslavement at the hands of corporations, or by the AI that they unintentionally unleash in an event called the singularity. Unprecedented inequality will result. Imagine what hyper-rich corporate CEOs would do with cloning or gene splicing to improve their bodies or minds based on what they can afford. It's a brave new world. You can think of Altered Carbon, Blade Runner, or The Island. Otherwise, imagine AIs which would decide they would like to use humans for something else than what humans want to be used for. Think of The Matrix. So here's a caveat. Capitalism is here used in the broadest sense of the term. It's not simply a method of market organization, but a politics, maybe neoliberalism, that comes with a psychology that shapes and forms your conception of human agency, and even the meaning of the human as a territory. Accelerationists are just kind of over it. We can't hold out for a redistribution of labor in neoliberal welfare states. And we shouldn't be hoping that anything is ever really gonna change. Our malign illness is far too advanced in stage to be treated, but it may be forced to evolve into something else, maybe. Self-identified accelerationists tend to argue that their methods are more realistic than their contemporary leftist counterparts half of whom are caught up in petty debates with neoliberals, and the other half are stuck contemplating overly humanist notions uh, such as labor, individual agency, and political organization. So let's get to a few of the credos of accelerationism. According to this left accelerationist manifesto, 30 years of neoliberalism have rendered most left-leaning political parties bereft of radical thought, hollowed out, and without a popular mandate. Furthermore, the habitual tactics of marching, holding signs, and establishing temporary autonomous zones risk becoming comforting substitutes for effective success. So what is the ultimate goal? Well, this is kind of unclear. Uh, it's a less defined by the nation states and representative democracies that we're used to and seek some sort of activation of forces and technology outside neoliberal democratic control. Think of blockchain, for example, Bitcoin. It's about a new future that's not controlled by these states, a future that is more modern, an alternative modernity that neoliberalism is inherently unable to generate. It's fair to say it has much more anarchic tendencies than the status quo in terms of realizing this future. Now, as I said, there are both left and right leaning variants of accelerationism. Right accelerationism is often criticized. The figurehead is the controversial Nick Land. It doesn't make that much sense to call him right wing as we might on a traditional political map. Yet right is his label because he explicitly declares that democratic institutions will become outdated by something like uh, neo-feudalism or hyper-corporatism in which elites will achieve the capacity to technologically augment their bodies or alter their genomes. He also flirts with eugenics and thinks fascism is an inevitable outcome because it gets things done. Nick Land's accelerationism sees these post-political enclaves as an inevitability that will define the future of humanity. Many others point out these fascistic overtones of these proclamations, but as far as I read him, it just seems like he's more describing what he thinks is an inevitable outcome, and then debating the morality or even desirability of a future of transhuman domination is not gonna prevent them from emerging. Accelerationism is simply the self-awareness of capitalism, which has scarcely begun. We haven't seen anything yet. As blockchains, drone logistics, nanotechnology, quantum computing, computational genomics, and virtual reality flood in, drenched in ever higher densities of artificial intelligence, accelerationism won't be going anywhere. Basically for land, this world is already here, although only in shards for the time being, 
and we have no idea what the full mosaic will look like. By the time we do see it, it's not going to care about what egalitarian or leftist critiques are wringing their hands about. Lands is a dark cyberpunk sort of future with both its breadth of its fears and its dreams of transcending human limitations. It has a correlate of sorts in the society we see in Blade Runner. You are left with a neo-feudalism of hyper-rich transhuman overlords, but for some, it represents a post-human and transhuman future, as well as a new evolutionary stage of life. One in which humans are not center stage, and perhaps they have no role at all. Humans might only be a springboard for a new superintelligence to jump out into the universe. Super space AI, the kind that uses stars as engines. I don't know, perhaps that's something to look forward to, at least for some people. Let's swing the other way and look at left accelerationism. Left accelerationists are not ready to abandon traditional leftist emphases, namely liberatory or emancipatory politics. By a broad enough definition, even Marx expresses some accelerationist tendencies. You know that the cycle of crisis, crisis, crisis will eventually reach a point where contradictions can't be co-opted anymore by the capitalist system. There's a chance that the end of capitalism corresponds to a more equitable world. This usually has something to do with uh, new technological advancement. Think of the popular uprisings and movements facilitated by social media, for example. Left accelerationists see potential here. Maybe social technologies like these can be used to create communities or enclaves of some sort, independent from the regular flows of capital and the political status quo of neoliberal nation states. Rather than working to smash the current capitalist system, the existing infrastructure is here identified as a platform requiring repurposing towards post-capitalist collective ends. Technology, from this standpoint, is enslaved to myopic capitalist purposes, with the wager being that the real transformative potentials of much scientific and technical research remain untapped. These pre-adaptations may become decisive, but only socio-political action is capable of activating them, meaning that technological change alone will remain entirely insufficient to radically alter our world. To me, this seems like an increasingly difficult position to maintain, at least as something that could become the status of a movement. Left accelerationists may attribute this to my own lack of imagination, but it does not take a lot of imagination to consider that the tools sponsored by Silicon Valley investment capital, uh, digital state surveillance, and online filter bubbles could suddenly emerge into a techno-anarchic liberation. For these reasons, it's often claimed that left accelerationism is a dead end. There is some potentially fruitful theoretical ground here. Nick Land, unsurprisingly, is not a fan of left accelerationism. Land writes, left accelerationism appears to have deconstructed itself back into traditional socialist politics, and the accelerationist torch has passed to a new generation of brilliant young thinkers activating what is called an unconditional accelerationism. This unconditional accelerationism means you're sort of in the middle of these two positions. So let me conclude by saying that accelerationism of every brand seems to service this somewhat resigned perspective on the world and what it's becoming. Perhaps there is liberatory potential there, if not for humans, then for post-humans, or maybe even something past that. There is a brave new world on the horizon. Whether that world has a place for us as humans does remain to be seen. 